Hi everyone, it's Annie and I'm back with another video and today we have a special guest, Lisa Levine, who is president and owner of Zone, which is a sports media consulting company. So thank you so much for joining us. So great to be here, Annie. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's just jump right into the questions. Uh, to kind of start off, can you tell us a little bit about your academic career at Tufts and what did you major in? Sure. So I went to Tufts and I was a political science major. Uh, I didn't really know that I wanted to go into sports at the time. I thought I wanted to go to nutrition and they had a really good school in nutrition. But I did two internships in college at TV stations in Boston in sports. And that's kind of what got my um, excitement about that path. Gotcha. So did you play sports in high school or anything? I did. I played tennis and basketball and softball. And then at Tufts, I played tennis. So it was really great. Division three, couldn't play division one and had a lot of different um, beautiful schools up in New England that we used to play against. Nice. Um, okay. So you just touched on that a little bit, but tell us a little bit about um, your professional career kind of leading up to making Zone. Sure. So I um, got out of college and I think I applied to about 200 different TV stations mm -hmm. and got probably 200 different rejection letters. <laughs> um, and then I was lucky enough to get an offer in my hometown in Cleveland uh, to work at the ABC affiliate. So I worked there for seven years and just worked my way up and was very fortunate uh, that different doors kept opening, um, which was great. And then after about seven years, just had the desire to, to try and move on and do something new. And, and the Cleveland Browns had just moved to Baltimore and they became the Ravens. And when I was there covering one of the games for Channel 5, they said, would you have any interest in joining us and working as our director of broadcasting, which was more of a business role, but I also did some on-air work. So I worked for the Ravens for four years and it was awesome because it was, I'd been in the media, always asking the questions. And then I went to work for the Ravens and I got to understand what it was like from a team, the team side of things. Nice. So did you also, were you able to kind of forge connections there with kind of people that opened more doors? Sure. Um, just, you know, one, it was, again, the experience of working for a team, which in, in all my clients now are team clients. So they wanted to understand, know that I understood what it was like from their perspective. And then different people that I worked with, uh, for sure, when I moved back to Cleveland, uh, my husband and I moved back to Cleveland, we wanted to start a family and I knew that working for a team and working in television would be very difficult and, and raise kids at the same time because yeah. it's you're working like 80 hours a week and the hours are crazy. So for sure, a lot of people that I worked with, both in television and when I worked for the Ravens, um, were my first clients and they did it, you know, as a favor and because they knew me. And so, you know, the old adage, you got you got to use people that you know and to help you open the first doors in order to help build a business. So then what kind of was the deciding factor was moving to Cleveland why you wanted to start your own business or yeah I'd say probably two things I had I had read maybe five years before we moved back to Cleveland this small little clip in a newspaper about a woman that started a media training business and I was like oh that's interesting nothing I'd ever thought about which I think is kind of cool that you know whether you're 17 18 or 24 you may go into a career that you never even thought about or that's completely different path. And that's what happened. I think I was maybe 30 and um, had read about this woman doing media training. And yes, part of it was also wanting to have my own business because I had worked really, really, really hard for um, 12 years and wasn't really compensated for my efforts. So I kind of wanted to control that a little bit more and um, didn't make a lot of money when I first started for sure. But um, it, it gave me the flexibility financially. It also gave me the flexibility in raising kids to make my own hours and work for myself. Okay, so kind of going off of that, uh, you said that you were inspired by another woman. How hard is it for women to break into sports media consulting? Well, I think more and more it's getting easier because there are a lot more women that are in sports roles, whether it's working for a team, whether it's working in sports television, there's so many different sideline reporters and anchors and reporters who do a great job. And so it's using some of those same skill sets to then go into consulting. Um, and also in the team side of thing, there's so many more women owners and presidents. And so it's, 
not such an anomaly like it was when I first started. It was definitely more rare. Um, okay, so then going specifically into Zone, uh, how would you describe your company and what do you do? Sure, Annie. So it when I first started the business, it was really doing media training for athletes, but I was working for the teams. I thought I was going to have athletes as clients, and then I realized that wasn't a great model, um, that I was better off working for a team and a business and you know that I had contracts with, and it was, it was just easier and more professional from a transactional standpoint. And so I did media training for, I don't know, I mean, when I started my business, which was 20 years ago, and now, you know, probably a hundred different teams and then started doing the leagues as well, because they were doing media training. So for the rookies, the NBA and the NFL did media training as well. And then after maybe six years, five, six years, and I loved it. Um, I had, I started, I had a son, Ryan, and a daughter, Kira, and I was traveling a lot. So I shifted a little bit and started to take on more of a consulting role in helping teams with their PR issues. So now I only do maybe a half a dozen or 10 media training sessions a year, but 95% of my clients are all teams that I consult with on PR issues, crisis issues, positive issues, you know, new stadium opens and things like that. And I kind of give them the bird's eye view. They have almost every, every team I work with has a PR person that works full time for the team. And so I talk to them or I talk to the owner or the coach or the general manager and, and give them different perspectives on the issues that they're going through. So uh, what would your fav what would you say your favorite part of doing that uh, PR work is? Oh, that's a good question. I think um, I just love the people that I work with. Most of my clients I've had for 10 and 15 years. So the relationships are awesome. Feeling like you're helping someone for sure. Um, you know, the challenges are, are interesting and intriguing too, when you get something new that crosses your plate an issue that you haven't had before. Um, so yeah, I think really the people and feeling some satisfaction and having someone say thank you and knowing that you made a difference. Yeah. Um, so I'm sure because you work with different sports teams and a slew of different athletes that no day is the same, but what's like your best example of a typical day working at Zoom? So. Yeah, that, that's a great, um, that's a great question and, and a good observation. Um, well, I don't work nine to five at a desk. So that's really good. So what I do most days is I, I wake up and I um, have some coffee that helps get the day going. And then I read. So every team sends me what are called clips. So every team has all the newspaper articles about their team that day. So I'll get an email from my NFL clients. I'll get emails from my NBA clients. And I read through so that I have a better understanding of what's going on that day with that client. And then usually um, I'll talk to the PR director or the general manager or the owner um, probably a few times a week, just about different, different issues. And then we might have a strategy session later in the afternoon mm -hmm. if there's a big project on what's the messaging, what are the questions? And then I'll look through some documents, some prep documents of you know, questions and answers and um, different messaging for the person that's speaking. There's one I'm working on right now for an owner who's doing some media on Tuesday. And so I'm trying to help them develop what the message is and then what potential questions are and what his answers are. Awesome. Um, so you, I know you talked a little bit about the people. So I have a feeling that is definitely one of the best parts, but what would you say is the most rewarding part of running your own business? And then what's the most challenging part? Yeah, I think that I think the most rewarding part is probably helping someone navigate a difficult situation because in this day and age, more so than when I started 20 years ago, it's just on the front page, not of the paper, but you know, the, the most traction on Twitter or you know, on social media. So it's really you have people's reputation on the line oftentimes, or hopefully it's not a crisis situation and you're just generating a lot of good publicity for you know a positive event. So that is the most rewarding. And then I'd say the most challenging is probably those crisis situations where there's not a defined way to approach it. And you, you go with your experience that's going to lead you, but you also have to go with your gut a little bit. But there's sometimes people's reputation on the line and, you know, you get a pit on your stomach thinking, oh, gosh, I hope I'm doing this the right way. So it's serving this individual the best way possible. 
Um, so you said, kind of going off of that a little bit, uh, you said you don't do a ton of media training sessions anymore, but uh, when you do them a little bit, how has it kind of evolved as social media has evolved? Because I'm sure it's much more detailed and elaborate now than it was 20 years ago. Sure, it didn't even exist 20 years ago, right? I didn't even didn't even have it. So, and even every year it evolves. So it's a big part of it. There, I usually use a lot of examples, a lot of screenshots of different athletes' blunders and pitfalls and things that they did wrong, and then some examples of how they use social media in a really positive way, like retweeting other people's causes or raising awareness for fans that might be raising money for a, a specific cause. Um, you know, bringing awareness to a foundation that they might be involved in. Um, connecting with fans on social media is really great. And then, you know, there's just the bozo things that people do, speeding and capturing it on social media or, you know, saying the wrong thing and, you know, putting up a post. So there's a lot of material out there. And the probably the greatest thing about social media, the biggest difficulty is it's so reactionary. And so it's trying to help the athletes understand the emotion the emotional component and how they have to detach before they get on social media. It's a little easier with a media interview because you have someone there and there's a process to doing an interview with social media. It's, it's your own world you're in. Um, so I'm very interested to know, you said you have forged a lot of really meaningful connections, but I'm also interested in just what's it like dealing with a bunch of professional male athletes on a daily basis and I am sure it can be challenging at times. You know, uh, it can be at times, but I think um, I've been really fortunate that I've only had maybe a couple on one hand, you know, negative instances. Yeah. And I think the most important thing is over time, just trying to project that you know what you're doing and project confidence and otherwise they might walk all over you. <laughs> but, um, and then day to day, most of my interactions with general managers or coaches or owners. And so it's a much, it's a very professional interaction, but the, but the players are very appreciative of the help of the help because they're put in a situation that's difficult and they um, there's a lot on the line as far as what they say and how they say it. So they are appreciative of some help, you know, whether they're talking about a political issue or vaccines or social justice issues, they're asked a lot of questions these days that have nothing to do with the sport that they play. So that's tough for anyone to answer, let alone someone who's 25. Um, okay, I think to kind of wrap things up, what would you say, uh, any advice that you have for young women who are interested in either going into business or starting their own businesses, whether that involves sports or not, what's, what advice would you give to them? I think uh, doing internships is really important. So, you know, sometimes you have a vision of what you want to do and then you actually go do it and you're like, uh, this isn't exactly what I had in mind. So I think that's really important. Number two, it's important because you forge some really formidable relationships that can then help you when you're looking for jobs. And then I would say three, um, three, four would be, you know, have a dream, have a vision, put it on paper. And don't be afraid to go after it. It's great to own your own business, but it's also great to work for different businesses first and not be an entrepreneur right out of the gate, but learn how things are done. It could take you 10, 15 years before you start your own business, but you, and you could work at some big corporations to understand the, the industry a little bit more. And then just be open, be open to, to knowing like, okay, it, it may not look exactly how I thought it was going to look five years later because you learned a lot and it, and you need to adjust a little bit and make it look like something else. So, you know, kind of be open to new ideas of, and ways of doing things. All right. Um, well, thank you so much for sitting down with me today. That was really great. I loved how you talked about how you were able to kind of keep connections going over like two decades and how you kind of took different paths that you weren't expecting, but it ended up being really great. So I don't know, that was really interesting to hear about for me. So um, I think that's it for today's video. Um, thank you everyone for tuning in. Thank you, Lisa, for being here. You're welcome. Thank you so much for having me.